Uh-huh. Here we go. Hello, welcome to Star Wars Spelt Out. I'm your host, Josh Chapman, and today, oh, happy May the 6th, everybody. Uh, yeah, there's no May the 4th show, so people have things going on, including myself. So we're on May the 6th, and uh, lucky enough to have two of my my buddies who have been on before who are in the same city, but you know how things are. We can't be in the same room, sadly, so we're doing the old uh, over-the-internet call. It's... Uh, Matt and Sean from Blue Panther Milk Co. Hey guys. Oh, here they Hello. come. Hello. Hey. Hey. How you doing? Just, just for people at home, there, we are doing a video version of this. So, we, you know, these guys are the video master blasters. So they're stepping me through. So I'm feeling very professional. Uh, happy May the 6th, Ty. Yes. And, and to you as well. Um, we had a good May the 4th and Revenge of the 5th. And then now it's just the 6th, right? Or is, is, the, is the one for those? Well, <laughs> I don't know. People debate this. Like I saw a mm. poll going around on Twitter today. People were saying, is it is it Revenge of the Fifth or Revenge of the Sixth? I'm like, why would you want a day in between? You want two no. consecutive days. Sure. Is there a better way you can put fifth in? It's fifth. No. Well, no, I've, I've seen really. sixth I've seen, actually um, does work better, but you need something to, you need something for fifth to take its spot. Yeah. The one I like for fifth that I've just seen is Cinco de Kylo. Oh, that's good. Oh, yeah. That's good. yeah. Like that I said, they is, yeah. need to have a new a new Star Wars movie called like you know Attack of the Piths or something like that. Just yeah. To, just <laughs> just sounds- just for the pure reason, it's like, oh wow, the uh, Taika, why did you name your new Star Wars movie Attack of the Piths? He's like, well, I just wanted uh, you know Revenge of the Sixth to sound better, and we needed something to put in, so that's it. That's it. Who's it gonna sounds- argue with me? I'm Taika Waititi. That's it. It, it. it sounds like one of those characters that George Lucas would have come up with, you know, and it's like, yeah, actually, the entire galaxy, even the wills, they're controlled by the Piths. Yeah, yeah. The Piths. Here's, the Piths. here's a book I wrote about. everything, yeah. yeah. It wouldn't even be a book. You'd just be like, somebody just ask him at a board table, like, George, but who are oh, the, the, let's just say the Piths did it. Yep, that's yeah, it. Here's, kind of, a, here's a napkin your that I wrote it on. I wrote this yeah. napkin in 1975. Just the um, yellow legal pad, just like rip the bottom bit off and be like, eh. Yeah, here you go. Yeah, he probably really did well, good work for the yellow legal pad sales in 1999. Although he's a bit of a one draft wonder on those prequels, though, wasn't he? Yeah. yeah. Can you do less yeah. than one draft? <laughs> <laughs> just I don't know. Points. How just many like times a... does it take, like, for Rick McCallum to just say, "Yeah, yeah, that's great, great idea." Yep. Perfect. Whatever you need. need needs nothing. <laughs> Whatever you need, George. Just make it happen. <laughs> I don't know what Rick McCallum's voice actually sounds like. That was kind of somewhere between Richard Nixon and I don't know why. <laughs> uh, George. <laughs> oh, George. <laughs> George. You just get out there. You, you tell those stupid kids to buy those damn toys, George. <laughs> Arr, I'm Richard George. Nixon, your, your most trusted producer. <laughs> oh, George. <laughs> <laughs> um, now Rick oh, McCallum's more sort of like, dude, dude, like he's that 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 amazing clip in that documentary where it's like, you McGregor, you know, he's just like, oh, you McGregor, McGregor, he's cool. He's just like, dude, I'm as cool as you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm as cool as the hottest young actor in Hollywood. Yeah, dude. So he's like a, a big grey-haired, like corporate surfer. Is what he's got the ground, doesn't he? Really, Rick McCallum, like, yeah, he has. Yeah, he doesn't really get that much. Um... Yeah, he doesn't get wheeled out and sort of like brought back into the mix, does he? he just sort well, of appears for the people. Episode one panel. No, I know, right? Like, was there a hmm. falling out? Am I like, am I missing something? In, maybe in some. Maybe he's he's gossip? the keeper of stories that you know, people know. Just, then me and Tony Daniel got a bunch of hookers in Tunisia and things about why. I'm just like, oh, Rick, we can't we can't have you telling <laughs> your episode one stories. <laughs> <laughs> Oh God! What are you oh, talking God. about? <laughs> oh God, that would be, yeah. I would, I would pay to see that behind the scenes, Doco. I really would. Oh, yeah. Well, like, kind of. Where's that footage? Well, especially now. Like, I mean, if they're making films now, there's always the official behind the scenes Doco. But then there's all the actors and all that now with smartphones with decent quality yeah. cameras. And it's like, I would love to see a behind the scenes. It's just an, an ensemble of everyone walking around doing this when they shouldn't be. Have you ever that, seen, that um, mm. you know, like the Lord of the Rings box sets have those like mega documentaries on them. Oh, so good. Um, oh, yeah. But, but there was like a DVD release that came out somewhere around that on a different set of DVD that had a different, I think it was only Fellowship, had a different documentary on it um, that wasn't those ones. And I think on the Blu-rays, it's on there. 
And it's really weird because it's not as like highly produced as the ones on the DVDs. And it's a little bit more like there's like people just having arguments and stuff on there. Just like, huh. yeah, it's 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 really unspoken about. I, I, if you've got them on Blu-ray, I'm almost positive they're on the Blu-rays or there's one on the Blu-ray. It's not yeah, the official okay. one. It's another one. And it's a lot more just like someone with a handy cam just walking around like the back streets of, of Oh, Because um, they, did, they did do video diaries, didn't they? But yeah, it was no, like, it's, it's not that. Not it's that. Else. Oh, okay. It's, um, hang on. Yeah, you I've got what? the Blu-rays. I should look. Gonna, I'm going to run and have a look. I've literally got my thing is right. I'm going to see if I've got it. Hang on. This is chat amongst yourselves, people. Come oh, on. yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, Sean, what are you doing? What's, uh, you no, right? no, not much. Did you Have you listened to that podcast that's all about how the um, the Phantom Menace, the first draft, what it was going to be? No. Back when it was no. called, like, episode one, the beginning. And there's, like, a yeah. making of book that has, like, the first draft of the script. And the only thing that jumps out for me is um, that at, uh, quiet, so when you got the two Jedi, Obi-Wan was the older one, Qui-Gon was the younger wait, one. Wait, wait, he's back, he's back. No, oh, someone's, I think I, I someone's got him. There you go, there's a I'm dead end. That. That. They're not there. Sorry. No, so sorry, what, what was it? That, sorry, oh, yeah, sorry, Josh so, so rudely interrupted. But, just, but, um, <laughs> I just remember this thing, there's this podcast, and it was, I think it must have been for the 20th anniversary and they went through all these different making up makings of and they did a Rick McCallum episode and all that and when they did the thing and it was all about episode one the beginning like the, when it was originally called that and it was pretty much the same film but the one big change was um Qui-Gon was the Padawan and Obi-Wan was the master and at the end Obi-Wan gets killed by Darth Maul and Qui-Gon changes his name to Obi-Wan as a tribute to the dead master, and that's Obi Wan. Oh, that's another another old switcheroo. Like, are there enough people pe- taking up different personalities in that movie? Like, there's what, like <laughs> yeah. there's yeah. Sidious and Palpatine. There's Padme and and Amidala. There, yep. there's at least two. There's more, isn't there? Isn't there another? Oh, isn't would... there another switcheroo? I don't know. I would love that. Well, I guess the idea is that you that must be cool. thinking: okay, how can we make the prequels uh, unpredictable? So you think to yourself, okay, well, we know Obi Wan's always going to survive. You know that's that's obvious. And then you kill him off, and then you change another character. Yeah, we just, just assume his name. name. So he's just yeah. John Ham from Mad Men, is he? Basically. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> There's a spoiler for Mad Men, everybody, which I've never seen, but I know that's what happens in Mad Men. I've, yeah. yeah, I've never seen it. I've, now I've just I've tried. Really you. Sorry. Have you I've tried? tried? I've tried so many times. I just yeah. can't get into it. I've, so I've watched it two or three seasons of it, um, oh, wow. and yeah, I keep, I've I keep two or three episodes, and I stopped. Like that—that that was sort of uh, where I got to it. Two or it, three it, seasons, it, and you couldn't get into it. It's like, yeah, that's crazy. Like, I've like, gone away and I've come back. So and gone patient. Away, come back. This one's gonna come. Yeah, there's a man with no children right there. He's just like, oh, I'll just <laughs> get back into this TV show that I didn't get going on for three times, and just having. But everyone, it. everyone keeps telling me it's the best thing on TV, and I'm like, no, I'm gonna work this out. But every episode just felt like a homework assignment. Like I was doing it for like obligation's sake, and oh. I was like, this, I'm got, I've got a, there's too much good TV, and because I guess it was like, you know, I downloaded them and I watched them, and then I tried it with someone else, and then they came on Netflix. So I was like, oh, okay, I'll give it another swing, and that was it. Third time was the um, mm-hmm. not charm. <laughs> Take that, so, yeah. Um, yeah. So, have you guys watched the Mandalorian documentary? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Pretty was, good. Uh, pretty, pretty, yeah. pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty yeah. good. No, really nothing good. groundbreaking. Not like sort of, you know, something that we didn't already know. But just interesting to hear them sort of chit chat, really. And I, I was surprised that they got them all in a room together. I kind of thought the whole that. You know, you have all these different directors and there's just no way you can get them all to cross paths. Mm-hmm. It looked like they were actually hanging out quite a lot, like even on sets and stuff. Yeah. 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 It, yeah. it was interesting to see, like, there'd be a few shots where it would be, yeah, people on other people's episodes and stuff like that, which is which is cool. Like, it's, um, well, I guess the, the, the all cameo did, or three of them cameoed in one of the episodes as, like, the X-Wing pilots. Mm. Yeah. Um, so I guess yeah. I thought, okay, well, that must be. But, yeah, no, it was, it was great. I was the one sort thing... of surprised. Oh, sorry. You go, mate. No, the, the, the one thing that sort of stood out to me that um, I was laughing about was um, when Bryce Dallas Howard is talking about her experience and she's like, oh, you know, when I was six, my father took me to Japan and I met Lucas and Kurosawa and all this. Mm. And there's like, a, there's, like, there's a bit where like Taika Waititi's looking at it and you can just see this kind of thing just pass over his face of just like, 
I've worked myself from the ground up doing <laughs> shitty theater work and gr- every opportunity I had. And she's like, yeah, I just fell asleep. And they were talking to Lucas and Kurosawa. And like, oh, <laughs> yeah. We come How- from very different backgrounds, you and I. <laughs> yeah. um, I was just surprised that, like, Favreau was there every day. Like, I kind of yeah. thought that yeah. he sort of had the idea and obviously he's a big name. He'd be like, well, I don't have the time to commit to this, so I'm going to hand it over and blah, blah, blah. But it looked like he was pretty much there all the time. So I guess he's just like, well, I'm not going to have to problem solve what comes with directing, but I am actually going to sit here and, and mind the baby, so to speak. Yeah. yeah Literally yeah. as well, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, he's like, you he seem very, very hands on. Um, mm. And he seems like he's going to be just as hands on, even just with the doco. Like if you watch the trailer, um, it, that round table format comes back, it looks like, in other episodes. Yeah. And it looks like he's in all of them as well. So, like, he's he's taken showrunner and just, like, realised, like, no, I am running the show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess me. as the fan, he's like, hey, I know what people want. You know, if you're going to do this documentary, let's, like, you know, give him some meat here. Let's not just have a couple of... Because yeah. there was a bit of, like, people obviously being interviewed on sets and stuff. But then, yeah, also... Yeah. Just that nice little round table. I, I assume in John Favreau's lounge room or whatever that it was. Or... <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's his bathroom. That's his guest bathroom. <laughs> his yeah. guest bathroom. Um, yeah, no, it was good. I'm curious to see where they go next. But I, they sort of like we had May the Fourth come out the other day, and then like Peyton Reed was like, "Hey, I'm doing a, I'm doing a start yeah. of Mandalorian," and then Robert, Robert Rodriguez. Rodriguez. Yeah. Um, are there any ladies doing season two? Not announced so far. Not announced. Like I think. Um, I think there's five that have been announced already. I know Deborah Chow's doing all of Obi Wan, but yeah, the five Fano, Filoni, Rodriguez, Weathers, Rodriguez, oh, yeah. and yeah. Reed. I always forget think, about Filoni. Yeah. Um, so Dallas Howell, Bryce Dallas Howell's not doing another one. Doesn't well. I mean, could announce it tomorrow. Could be announcing it right now. Who knows? Hmm. Yeah. Do you feel like know. all this like? Like all this, the stuff that got dropped. Like we got the, you know, the dark and the Clone Wars and Rise of Skywalker streaming on May the fourth. But then all of a sudden it was like announcement, announcement, announcement. We'll get to Taika Waititi one, obviously, which is a huge one. Mm. Do you feel like this is like, hey, there's no celebration? We would have held our powder and dropped this at celebration, but now we might as well just drop it now. Like I kind of feel like the Taika Waititi one, you could have waited six weeks or whatever it is. Could have brought him out on stage. Months. Well, that's what I mean. Like you're going, going, hey. Yeah. Nothing's going to happen anyway, yeah. potentially. Like, it seems like, you know, it's still be probably. T- is I mean, is this the two? They haven't. They didn't say this is the 2022 movie, did they? No, no, they just they haven't, haven't put times. There's no timeline on it just yet. Because he's doing um, next goal wins at the moment, mm. and then um, is this is this Star Wars going to be after Thor, Love and Thunder? So he's got two films to make first. Yeah. yeah, which makes me um, kind of wonder. It's like you would normally like you drop that in the big room at celebration. You do the future announcements and be like, "Ladies and gentlemen, here's Taika Waititi. Everybody loves yeah. you. Everyone loves him." So it just seems strange that they're kind of like, "Oh, we might as well just announce it now." Yeah, yeah someone said I mean, to me yeah. um, that tickets for celebration had gone back up the other day. I think they, I, mean, I think they haven't they stopped it with me. Well, I don't think that, like all. All day tickets, and I was like, "No, hold on, what?" That, so I didn't check this or verify it. Like, but I'm look someone, right someone told me that they could buy all day tickets again, and I was like, "But hold on, they just announced that we're watching the COVID situation, so you know, stay tuned." So I, part of me wonders, like, if that was the case, are they putting them, or are they they taking more sales for a future event, knowing that they're going to postpone the thing or something like that? I they're waiting I'm for, they're saying after for the day four. Well, the, the, the countdown, because like the first thing you see on the website is the countdown. So it literally says 113 days, 8 hours, 32 minutes, 26 Ugh. seconds. Like it's still just counting down. Um, God. No, no, you can't. You can No, nah, Thursday, Sunday, and kids, one day is all that's left. Okay, Friday, so Saturday, four day, all sold out. So unless they've, unless they know something we don't. Um, <laughs> well, I'd but, say they know a lot of things we don't. <laughs> But, oh, but I mean God. the person who told you that they got one. But it's oh that yeah yeah. Like, it's 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 funny though because it's like you know we uh, you can't have a podcast these days without getting into a bit of COVID talk. And you know, I obviously brought it up first thing, but you know America is opening like they're they're doing it re- regardless. Like stuff is opening up. Like they're talking they about Disneyland opening. Shit. They're just like, going well. 
it just seems to be, well, oh, well, we're just going to suffer the consequences and just get this thing rolling. So it's, it's basically really going to come down to what the mayor of California or whoever's in charge, the governor of California, decides to do because... Um, but I, I, like, we're not going to we're not going to get let out. We're not like if they go, no. hey, we're, it's going to happen. Yeah, we're not yeah. out of the country. We we are locked down. <laughs> and it's so not we over. should be. Like, yeah, like it's not over. It's not even remotely over. <laughs> no, like all of our initial cases and stuff like that. Like, you know, anecdotally, I was told, go go get this article. Go get this article. These cases that we got weren't coming from China. <laughs> we were getting them from Western countries and, you know, hint, hint, mm. like most of our mm. imported, most of our cases were imported. Um, US. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, US. Like, you know, <laughs> so, look, it just, but it just means that there is potentially like it, it could open up. But I think, you know, like Celebration gets so many people from all over the place. I feel like that even if they technically could do it, they won't do it. I think well, there's just no... There's no, ups, there is no upside for, for, for having it at the moment. There's like they no. they lose pretty, practically nothing doing it next year. Yeah, like there there'll be some weird contract like clauses and stuff like oh, that. Oh yeah, like the, some, have to reimburse the hot dog arguments. guy or something. Or yeah, like there'll be there'll be arguments. Like basically, let's just put it that way. There'll, there'll be some arguments over contracts and legals and bookings. There'll be bookings that were already in place for the year later. Um, mm. At the at venues, and there will have probably be a mad scramble to try and find stuff like that. Mm. It just it screams of them trying to avoid doing a hell of a lot of work for as long as possible. But then at some point, it's all going to have to happen, and they're going to have less time to sort it out. Anthony so, Daniels is going to have to move his book back a year. You know, like he won't be able to plug his book. <laughs> I feel like I'm just shitting on Anthony Daniels too much on this uh, episode. He can, <laughs> he can he can plug his book for an entire more extra year. Oh, I guess his next book. You know, like is this, like part two, the things I left out. You know, the um, I don't know. Have you read? Have you read it? No, no, no. Have you? Have you? No. Okay. Not, well, nothing that, against that, the guy, that, but that conversation's done. Yeah, <laughs> I was waiting for the big juicy bits. He's like, "Oh, that bit where he, you know, like he punched Kenny Baker in the head or something." Or... <laughs> there's a um, there's a interview he did for Wired. I was telling this on I think on one of our live streams. Like, if you haven't seen it, watch it. It goes for like forty or fifty minutes or something like that. It's excellent. It's a sort. Of, it should have been on the Rise of Skywalker Blu-ray. Like, it should have mm. been an extra. He just talks about his entire career as 3PO, like hmm. every iteration of the costume, all the changes, all the crap that he used to have to go through to put the thing on and like how they didn't fix things as basic as how making putting the mask on as easy as they could until the final film. It's like it, it was a couple hour job, and then for the very last time that he has to do it, it's well, like, oh, we could yeah, just use magnets. Oh, click, click, done. <laughs> um, like, have you ever has yeah. he ever have you ever seen him in anything not Star Wars related ever? Like have you ever watched um, a movie and gone like, oh like like when no. Tim Brooke Taylor died from Tim Brooke Taylor from the goodies, like I was a huge goodies fan. And of course I fell down the goodies rabbit hole. And then like I just remember as a kid um watching I don't know, it's something it was something it must have been like East Enders or something like that. Not that, something I would always watch, but like for whatever it was on the ABC at like 6 30, the TV's on the background. And then like Tim Brooke Taylor would be on and I'm like well, that's weird. That's Tim from the goodies, you know. What's he doing there? Like <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah. really took me out. Um, but I suppose, you know, like Anthony Daniels is always C3PO, you know, ninety-nine point nine percent of the time with the mask on. Um, have you never ever watched anything and gone, oh, that's weird. That's that, no. that's a little disconcerting. Like it's disconcerting seeing Carrie Fisher sometimes pop up in stuff. Like even like Blues Brothers, which I love, I've seen a million times. Yeah. I'm like, oh yeah, it's Carrie Fisher. If yeah. if you go through um Daniels's uh IMDB, it's so ah, here we go. I love research. Star Wars. <laughs> um, and then just random like English TV stuff like he was in Randall and Hopkirk Deceased he was on Holby City he was in Doctors okay. like just one episode like recently stuff. we're talking like 83 kind of like just... yeah I would say okay going from the top down the last time he was not doing anything in Star Wars or as 3PO was in 2012 2013 he was the narrator on Dir Dirigible Days I guess about like blimps, and then pre that, in two thousand eight, he was a voice in "Help, I'm No Bigger Than a Bug," a TV movie. But all the rest <laughs> of it's just Star Wars. Uh, yeah, right. 
I wonder if it's I wonder if it's like he what percentage of his just like typecasting or you know anytime Star Wars you know calls he answers the phone and he's just pretty much busy doing Star Wars you know like yeah. even though we've had yeah. massive droughts of films and stuff it always feels like you know video games and you know everything else and presenting and you know, all that yeah. kind of stuff mm. just sort of yeah well, they've been a constant like the droids have been What's, in so yeah. much stuff like while we've been waiting for films like in video games and all that sort of stuff he seems like the the one consistent voice that they that they had like Vader never no forget about it it's like how many different voice actors have they had try to do vader in video games and things never like that. quite sounds right though does it no even, it like, it even yeah. like vader even james l jones doesn't sound right now like james l jones in uh rise of skywalker doesn't sound right he sounds old just a little different yeah <laughs> but like even yeah. Yeah. Rogue Rogue one as well he just different. yeah yeah he yeah, just sounds a little different he doesn't he doesn't sound the same as he does i think sort of like empire is sort of the perfect empire mm, yeah. jedi is the perfect pitch where he kind of nailed it um yeah. age grizzles you you know like your, yeah. your vocal cords <laughs> look well, at all true. of us you know <laughs> yeah. Yeah. your vocal cords yeah. aren't in the same condition like they, they're not gonna sound the same i mean fuck like carrie fisher sounds very very different mm. you know like she like, wasn't actually that old <laughs> she's yeah. no. just my mum you know like i, I kind of like see my mum and i'm like oh my god like carrie fisher looks 20 years older than you do but yeah i think she she lived a bit you know she lived harder. Yeah. Yeah. Well, partied hard. They tried to get Al Pacino to do like when they did a Godfather video game and they said to Al Pacino, now can you come back and play Michael? And he was like, no. Um, listen to the sound of Michael Corleone in the Godfather movies. His voice Everybody's is quite Mike, high. Yeah, he's all like, like, it's yeah. like that's my brother. Yeah, he's my got brother. Like, a, like a baby's voice. Yeah. He couldn't do it. That was just like, God, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, 90s, the 90s really ruined him. Like that oh, he, really he, destroyed his he voice. He got a bull and Oscar for Sense of a Woman. And he was just like, oh, I'm, I'm good now. This this is me. Yeah. Yeah. I got an Oscar for doing, like, doing a big performance. Did so, he audition for Han Solo? Yeah. Is that true? Yes. Yep. Hans, he yes. did. It was him, Christopher Walken, Kurt Russell. You can actually watch Kurt Russell's screen mm. test. Mm. And, it's, uh, and it's crap. Well, Kurt Russell's still like Kurt Russell's aged amazingly well. It's like, um, oh, okay. you know, people talk about like, you know, Indiana Jones keeps getting pushed back and you know, Harrison Ford's like 77, 78 now looking old. But like, you know, originally it was supposed to be um, Magnum PI. Um, yeah. yeah, Tom, Tom Selleck. Selleck. Tom Selleck. Tom Selleck looks great still. Like, I could buy yeah, yeah. Tom Selleck as Indiana Jones. You know, if he'd been Indiana Jones in 82 and running around now, like, ah, you know, still got the Mo, still looking good, you know, what, go for it. I, I gotta um, see what he looks like. I'm looking this up. Like, Tom Selleck. Yeah. You looking I've, at Tom Selleck? <laughs> yeah. I've never thought to to look to see what he looks to like. Check these in days. on Tom Selleck. <laughs> yeah. What's he have the doing mo? these days? Oh, of course, he's gonna have the mo. Oh, he's in like a cop show or something. Yeah, I'm sure. he's, or he's yeah. on like CSI or he'll have, he'll have, he'll be he'll be getting work. It won't be great oh, work, yeah. but it'll be work. Oh yeah. I think. He's, oh yeah. He, yeah, okay, there's yeah. some more recent. Pictures. I mean, he's obviously dyeing his hair. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's definitely in the Just for Men club. Like, absolutely. Mm. Well, you can, I yeah. think that's another one as well. You can watch his, like, I think his I'm eyes done as well. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> on the Indiana Jones box set, you could watch all the screen tests. All oh, the screen and, tests and stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, and like Sean Young and stuff like that. And I remember, wasn't it a whole thing with that where. Am I thinking of Star Wars? Am I thinking of Indiana Jones, where Harrison Ford was brought in just to read read against people? Star Wars was, yeah. That was, was Star Wars, Wars. okay. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't want any American graffiti kids in it, apparently. That was that it, was yeah, the... yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He just wanted he wanted Harrison Ford to just build a Fix door his door or something. Or something. Like yeah, that. yeah. Because yeah. it was a how weird, stuff. isn't it? Like being in like the life of an actor. Like one day you you make an American graffiti, the next day you're just like, you know. Banging a door together. My cousin Angus, who's been Cleaning on this pools show, and then banging. Yeah, well, my else. my cousin Angus, who's who was who's been on this show before, he was one of the Pack to the Rafters kids, and um, oh. you know, he acted. He was in movies and all sorts of stuff. And then he's just like, you see him at Christmas, he's just like nothing's happening, <laughs> you, you know. <laughs> and then um, and then all of a sudden, like Pack to the Rafters gets you know, brought back by Amazon. He's just like, ching ching, I'm back, baby, you know. Like, <laughs> uh, <that's good. laughs> Amazing. It's a tough life, and he he or uh, he he mentions it. I don't know if you've heard the episode, but he mentions on he auditioned for Young Han Solo. So, huh. ah, that's pretty. But he didn't realize what it was until after the fact. Like they didn't, he wasn't the lines when he goes. It, the lines weren't like you know, Chewie, pass me that. <laughs> da, 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 da. It was just you were John, at, pass me it was, that. 
Yeah, <laughs> John, this is the Ask Millennium Falcon. Range. Um, it was just like you're at a, a party, you're a cool guy, you're you um, kind of act like Chris Pratt, I think they said. I was like, oh, like weirdly wow. religious. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah, like yeah. <laughs> yeah, God. I really don't like like that guy after finding out all that stuff about him. Like when his when his actual personality and all that came out, I was like, oh, he left Anna Pratt. Paris. Yeah, yeah like, wow. Yeah, he anyway, does that. Got a Pratt cast, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um so I know you guys did your big um, you know, your Clone Wars recap and, and your video and all that kind of stuff. And, Everything um, we do is big, Josh. I know, Everything. I know that. Everything is go big. Hard or go hard. Broke the internet. But I'm gonna I'm gonna quiz you again <laughs> big on that. Mistakes, errors, <laughs> shit. it's all big. Fights, big tears afterwards, yeah. big, yeah. big pointing at the other person. Big arguments, big blame, big guilt. Love it. <laughs> big um, kebab. Big kebab. So has it been, was it I mean, was it worth it at the end? Like I mean they obviously they stick the they stuck the landing. It could be any any sort of question about that. Like um I mean, personally, I felt like the first eight episodes were pretty much just sort of parallel with average Clone Wars stuff, which is fine. You know, it was as good as it yeah. as it normally was. And it felt like that they were really just concentrating on these last four. That was sort of the really the reason to bring it back. Is yeah. that what you guys reckon? Or... Yeah. Sean, you, sure. you, yeah? Yeah, no, I mean, I think it, 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 maybe they just kind of got the team together and just like, right, 99% of the work is going to be this. A few mm -hmm. people who've drawn the short straw get some old episodes and just spruce them up and get them the fuck out. Uh, I'm sorry, can I don't even know if I can swear. <laughs> you can swear. Uh, okay. Excellent. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, it's. I think it seemed like all the effort was put into making just this cool movie at the end of the at the end of the series, just to just to wrap everything up. And um, it was perfect. I thought. Mm. I can't. I can't knock it. What he said. <laughs> Definitely what he said. Like, you know. It, it, yeah, they stuck the, stuck the landing. Um, we said on our on our stream, like just the way that they could wrap up the story without having to do silly montages, you know, and like, and then yeah. they ended up there, and then this happened, and ah, I, yeah, I was a bit worried they were like, going to do a bit of that as well, and yeah, mm. they didn't have to. It's great because Rebels Rebels was there to to pick up that slack um, with those yeah. characters. So yeah, yeah. Darth Maul was nailed it. More. I quite enjoyed Darth Maul. I didn't really, I didn't love Darth Maul in Rebels. I'd have to go back and rewatch maybe, but I did like he was a bit more. Maybe he just had his marbles a little bit more, a little bit. Mm. I don't know. Like I just give like, <laughs> you know, there's a bit less. He just seemed a little bit more in control of his shit. I don't know. But, uh... <laughs> Thank, that, that, that's my new ringtone. Thanks, man. Is it <laughs> giving you your yeah. best Kenobi? I don't, no, you know, just you, you doing Kenobi. Uh, <laughs> whenever, you, whenever you call, that's that's all it's going to be. <laughs> like, ah, uh, here he is again. Um, yeah, no, yeah. I, I want to go back and watch Rebels after that just because, like, you know, obviously there's a time gap and all that, and he's a hmm. bit he's a bit more weathered and he's 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 sort of worn down by whatever has happened he's in between. That out by the end, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, I expect him to be kind of different, but yeah, like I I would like to see how he's, I guess. All this new information carries forward because like, mm. that, that's the the brilliant sort of part about that character is just how how layered he becomes by the end of it from something that could have could have been executed so horribly. Like, ah, oh, he was the biggest one trick born. pony to start with, wasn't yeah. he? Really? Like, yeah, and that trick was being cut in half and dumped down a hole. Yeah. That's but it. like kind of looking much. cool. That was about it. You know, like yeah. he had a couple yeah. of cool moves and he looked cool. Um, and that probably should have been the end of it, and especially when you kind of like bring him back, you're like, oh god, like what are we, what are we doing here? Like, spider I'm really leg. glad they didn't leave it though. Like, yeah, really thinking about like if someone had told you years back and said they're going to bring him back, you'd go, what? What are you doing? Why? Like, and I think even Filoni said that in in one of those um, behind the scenes videos they put out on YouTube. Like, he would have been like, huh? But it works. Mm. Like. Did George say that? Someone said. Someone said it. Someone up there but was you know, like, just like a, oh, "That's a terrible idea." George but Lucas just cool. like, "Oh yeah, just bring him back." But he's in cut in half. I oh, just give him some spider legs. Yeah, yeah spider spider legs. legs. <laughs> <laughs> do I have to? Do I have to do everything? <laughs> yeah, I have to think of everything right here. Um, I'm so glad yeah. someone didn't win at arguing against it because, like, it, what we got with that story, incredibly good. Like, and, and 
valuable, I think, in terms of what it adds to the hmm. adds to the text. You know, were you guys sort of surprised? I mean, I was that it overlapped Revenge of the Sith. Like, I I just assumed all hmm. along we'll end up with Anakin and Obi Wan getting in those fighters and getting ready to fly off, and like the Chancellor's been kidnapped would have been the like I was like, well, that's the end there. That's where they'll they'll end yeah. it. Um, and then when that kind of happened in the second episode, I was like. Oh, okay, this is interesting. Like we're, uh, we're, um, yeah. yeah. It, like you know, it was really that sort of, you know, that you cut the scene, like the range of the scene, the Sith scene ends, and then the conversation keeps going on, and Ahsoka walks in the door and stuff. And yeah, yeah I mean, that was a big surprise for me. I, I wasn't expecting that at all. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. um, Filoni had made such a big thing as well with Rebels, because everyone was sort of like, oh, Rebels is going to finish with the Battle of Scarif. Like that mm. was going to be, or it was even going to end with like the Death Star. People were taking it as far as that, and he was sort of like, mm, "No, we're we're telling our own story here, so we're going to wrap ours up. All that other stuff, you know, all that stuff. We don't need to show you that. We're going to wrap this up here, um, which which they do. So I it's, I was thinking the same thing as Josh. I thought it was going to get right up to the point where the move the next movie would start. Um, yeah, yeah. But as soon as like you say, as soon as it's like, oh, we've been called back to the the capital. Grievous has attacked it. You're like. Oh shit! This is gonna yeah, get wild. I guess the, the difference with Rebels, I guess, is that they're separate. They're not as intertwined as the characters in Clone mm. Wars. Like Ahsoka is directly, yeah. you know, with those characters. Um, you know, with Anakin, Obi Wan, all those people. Whereas, like the Rebels, like you said, like they don't. It's not like they've been crossing paths with all those characters leading up or no. anything like that. So you can yeah, kind true. of, you know, push them to the side. It doesn't really matter. Um, it's called the Clone Wars. <laughs> like. <it's, yeah. laughs> like you gotta show it you gotta show who's involved in a sense like you know even just that they could have they could have done that they could have just ended it right there with with like yep off they go and there's episode three now and that's the clone wars done like they could have done that but yeah it would have been a bit of a cop out like I'm yeah some, i think yeah the way it led up to it you know like if we if we got into episode four like if they caught maul in the end of episode three or halfway through episode mm. four and then you know, they bring him in and then it's just like, oh, good work. Okay. And then you have like a, you know, like a little knowing look between Ahsoka and Anakin. You're like, oh, isn't that sad? What a way, a way to end it. That's the way that they looked at each other before they went their separate ways. And yeah. hmm. maybe you could get away with that. But I, yeah, I, is Padme pregnant? Is Padme nine months pregnant at the start of Revenge of the Sith then? Excellent question. Yeah. And we, have, we did talk about this. How long do you think, Josh, that Revenge of the Sith from beginning to end, how long does it take? How long does it take? Days? Well, months, I always week? thought it was like six months or something originally. Yeah. But just yeah. given that she's like, oh, something amazing's happened. I'm pregnant. And he's like, oh my God. And then they're hanging out and I'm going to have my baby. And and then, you know, she's holding, like when I had Kat, my partner on, we, and we were talking about, like, she, I showed her a picture of Natalie Portman, like, you know, and she's like, there's no way she's got twins. There's no way she could stay out that long. It's just impossible. That's it. You know, there's no way people could not know that she doesn't have twins, including herself. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's already, exactly. yeah. You know, I think George Lucas, I mean, it just shows George Lucas got a lot, lot of adopted kids. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I don't know. Does he have any biological children or are all these children adopted? Not the I don't know, actually. Not even, they obviously, he's never had to go through having a pregnant partner before. Oh, no, I think his <laughs> wife now, because um, he had another child recently, didn't he? Did he? Like the last couple of years. Like, I think he got married. Yeah, he married a lady a couple of years ago and had a child, I'm pretty sure. But, I mean, he's already uh, written. Okay. Like, he's probably sitting there going, oh, my God, like who knew your pregnancy goes for nine months and, and that, you know, the, this happened. <laughs> Like, nobody told me. I had no idea. If I'd been writing Revenge of the Sith now, it would have it would have made a lot more sense. I think he's got a daughter or something. I think this is this is sorry. This got me like really puzzled about the timeline now because yeah, adopted two children. It, how long does Revenge of the Sith take place over? And at the start of Revenge of the Sith, they're coming back from saving the Chancellor, and Anakin learns about the pregnancy then, right? Like that's, that's yes. when he learns about it. So it's after that. So yep. then how long does that Clone Wars arc take place over? Because they go off to save the Chancellor in episode one. Mm -hmm. So then how? what's the gap between that happening and then episodes two, three, and four? Because also then in the Bad... Isn't the Bad Batch arc... Doesn't Anakin or... Yeah, doesn't they Anakin do a video a, call with her? A she's already got, like, and she's she is holding a, 
Yeah, but he's he's he doesn't. Yeah, he's not. He's he got he's Lucas. Not, he's, baby he's been well trained to not. He's been well trained to look her in the eyes. You know, it's like, hey, the eyes are up here, mate. And Natalie Portman. Yeah. Where the, like, where the hell's the your... timeline? I I don't know now. Yeah. Um. I'm really confused. I, to, I does... just want to see a photo of her at the start of. I've got to find a photo of Natalie Portman in that first scene, and see if I can get an idea of how big she looks. Like if that one all. when they come back and he tells her, I'm like, I'm, I'm playing a dangerous game here going to screen caps, Star Wars screen caps. But anyway. Are they going to have to do like a, a 4K Blu ray version of Revenge of the Sith where someone just gets like the Photoshop bulge tool and just goes, boom? <laughs> it just like brings those, it out. Like what the Instagrammers use on their butts for fitness profiles. It's just like, look how big my booty is. And then someone just goes, you <laughs> and it's just like cool. them giving, giving diddly yeah. in the background. All the background behind Padme is all like blurred, all, blurred all, stuff. all lined, distorted. It's like, see, she was just showing. Oh, he's just he's just not considerate. He doesn't pay any attention. Yeah, I'm just I'm um, yeah. found found the picture. I'm just going through. Like, I'm I've got to go through the whole goddamn movie here. They're just they're still trying to crash the plane. This is what happens when you don't have the you don't have the the, the files here handy. Up oh, here we go. Uh, they're seeing him off. So Lucas has three adopted kids and one kid born via surrogate. So chance, so it's yeah. possible he has never well, seen a pregnant woman. He has never. Oh, well, there you it's go. Still like, happening when you in get, a different part. When you get the still up, I think you can share your Can you share your screen on this? Oh. Like down the bottom of, of StreamYard here? Can you see a share screen button? I want to see it. Oh, yeah, I've got that. I yeah. Share my screen. yeah, so when you, get the, when you get the still up, it. share it. All right, I'm just about to get it here. I'm just trying to. So this is possibly uh, a woman who is nine months pregnant with twins and about to give yeah. birth in 45 minutes, depending on the yeah. timeline. He doesn't even notice. I'm just trying to... There's a lot of shots from the from the top of the head. I'm just trying to see if I can find... Cause there's sort of a wide shot when he approaches her. Yeah. Uh, but you can't really... Because he sort of, you know, he kind of does his little run over. To, you know, because she's sort of standing in the background while they're having the little meeting and things. Yeah. Uh, it's you know what? It's pretty sneakily done. It's all from hmm. the back. You can't see the front of her, and then it's all sort of shot from the neck down. I'd have to check the. Yeah, we could be here all day. I'll see. I have to find something, but yeah. Yeah. it's to be honest. She shouldn't be telling him, hey, something amazing's happened. Like the first thing he would be like, like, holy crap, what is going on there? She'd be mm. like, mm -hmm. yeah, full like, of twins. Oh. Which, yeah, yeah, so that means that I mean, if you go, all right, let's assume that the you know the pregnancy gestation time is the same in it's nine months, like it's not different for humans in a galaxy far, far away. Yeah. Um, what's it three years between Revenge of the Sith and Attack of the Clones? Yeah, oh, so you got to like kind of you got to go back to the like. Is there a Clone Wars episode where Anakin and like? Can we pinpoint that episode now? We need like someone to go where through. they've gone off. Yeah, you're like you go to season you know four or something like that, or and um, go like, oh, there's an episode where they're you know they're hanging out. Uh, it could be when yeah. he's uh, when he's pretending to be a guard. Yeah, yeah like, like don't worry, to be I'll... security and bashing her oh. friends from the old from the past. That, that's a real turn on, I think. And yet we need to uh, do that. What's his name? Clovis? The Rush Clovis episodes? Clovis. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's Clovis. It's it. Yeah, that's yeah. Because, you know, apparently that's how it works. You know, you you want to show show that you're a strong man, right? So you find so this like, like oh, a, is that, you, is that your ex? You beat him up. Yep. Uh, and so then you that's, that's, how, that's how you woo people, apparently. Yeah. yeah. And then just like, yeah, I've totally got one on, baby. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, come here, and it's like Casablanca style, just like wow, and like. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm off to um, the sieges of the outer rim for yes, nine good months. Luck. I'm oh, sure nothing will happen. Um, and <laughs> Don't message me, baby. Don't want to hear about yeah. that. This timeline. <laughs> Sorry, this, this is going to bug me. This timeline's going to bug the hell out of me for a while. Uh, I, can, I can tell you now. I might actually bring up Wikipedia while we're chatting. If you so can figure that ten, out. 10 years, isn't it, between Phantom Menace and Attack of the Clones, yeah? 10? Yeah. yeah. Yes. So we go from not 9 to 19, is it? Or 10 to 20, roughly? What is he in 7 Phantom to 17? Menace? No, he's older than 7, isn't he? I thought he was 9 or 10. I thought he was Phantom 7. Menace. Old I enough mean... to do it. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> uh, all right. So that means I'm Padme's 20. Yeah, so Padme's... 
14 in Phantom Menace. So she's 24 in Attack of the Clones and she's 27 in oh, yeah, nine. Revenge of the Sith. And Anakin is 23, 24. So, yeah, he's nine in Attack of the Clones, 19 in Attack... Uh, sorry, uh, nine in Phantom Menace, 19 in Attack of the Clones. And... A lot of people just focusing on that age gap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there is a bit of that. All right, here we go. I've got the timeline up. All right, here, here. we go. So All right, let me... let's sort this sucker out. Did we ever yeah. find out how much time passed between Last Jedi and Rise of Skywalker? Is it a year? A year, I think they said. Supposed to be a year. Okay. For officially, I think John Boyega said a year, but I mean mm. that might have been before. But I do like how John Boyega gives zero Fs now. So yeah. very nice. Oh, he, you know? Yeah, he doesn't care about much at all. Um, he's good. He's like, I've been buttoned down for a while. And now just, you know, let me, the people forget, you know, we grew up in a rough part of London and, you know, he, he's probably, you know, um, got some attitude. Why not? <laughs> oh, I'd say a little bit. Let's see. Does this good work? Oh. All right. So here we go. This oh, is right. wow. Look at this. This is going to yeah, be completely useful for shit. people listening in, but Matt has brought yeah. up a little timeline here. Um, yeah, oh, th- okay. I do like that someone's already gone to all the trouble to do this. Yeah, Wikipedia yeah. is amazing like this. Okay, so where are we at? So we're at Clone Wars Season 4, 5, 6. Okay, so 4, 5, 6. Uh, wait, wait, wait. 7. Here we seven, go. Yeah. So according to the timeline here, we've got, Dark Disciple, uh, go back, Season 6, Episode 13, so Sacrifice, and then some of the unfinished episodes um, happen. Then you've got Dark Disciple. You've got then the Darth Maul, Son of Dathomir comics. You've got the Kanan comics. Great comic. Yeah. And then, aha, so here's the timeline. So uh, Season 7, 5, 6, 7, and 8. So the Martez, is it Martez or Martel? The Martez Sisters. That yep. arc yep. is first, technically. Oh, then, yes, then of course it is, because he's still batch. on Coruscant. Yep. Then it's the Bad Batch. So they're um, even mucking the order around. Like, they haven't yep. learned their lesson from the last time. They're still yep. freaking around with the timeline. Yeah, so well, it's then- uh, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four. Uh, and then, uh, this is now this is weird. They've put, they've put seven... Nine. So they've put old friends not forgotten as yep. the next episode because it occurs prior to and concurrently with Revenge of the Sith. Then it's Revenge of the Sith. And then yeah, Phantom okay. Apprentice, Shattered, and Victory and Death. Yeah, okay. So yeah, so, that's where it all sits. Because Victory and Death ends after Revenge of the Sith. Yes. Yes. Yep. So That's that right. scene when the Mata sisters and Ahsoka are leaving Coruscant and they have that uh, Return the Jedi thing with um, Anakin and the Imperial officer. Oh, yeah. So Anakin's still, at Cor- still on Coruscant. Is that, does that mean then that between that and the Bad Batch, when he's off in the sieges of the Outer Rim, is months and months and months and months later? Or is it like, oh, he's just he's just come back for a bit, but he doesn't have time to go and see Padme? That means you've got nine months of story that hasn't been chronicled in the show. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's yeah. only three years. That's what I mean. There's only three years there, and then you've chopped nine months of story. Like, it has to have happened. Like, unless... At, at I mean, it, could, no, it couldn't be, though, could I mean, it? Cause... Padme's around Anakin for months and doesn't mention she's pregnant. <laughs> I think so, because then... The she Ahsoka pretty that much that meets Bo Katan straight away, and then the Siege of Mandalore starts. So mm. the timeline yeah. sort of gets a bit I freaky we, there. We could just assume that Anakin's a massive dumbass, basically. Then <laughs> I think Anakin's a dumbass, yeah. And we've got to assume that I think maybe after the Martez sisters leave Coruscant, so does Anakin, and Bad Batch happens at the same time. Yeah. And then they all end up in the same place. Does in that episode in the Bad Batch where Anakin and her speak, is there any mention of the pregnancy there? I can't remember. Or is it just that she's obviously got she's, a bump? and Yeah, and she's got a hand on her belly. I mean, it. she literally says to Anakin, like, something amazing's happened, I'm pregnant, and he just looks like someone has just, you know, dropped a 10-ton truck on his head. But he's yeah. always just like, oh, man, like, <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was free and now I'm in this. <laughs> oh, wow. All right. I, I didn't think I would ever say this, but I'm probably going to have to go back and watch the Bad Batch episodes again. 
I was, yeah. I was on my list of Clone Wars episodes where I can easily just go, yeah, I don't need to see that again. Like, I know it. That's fine. Skip. Skip them. Um, skip. Let's just pivot. Let's do a little pivoty, pivoty 360 and go back to where we started because we did mention it. We didn't really touch on it anymore, but we should get a little bit more on this new Taika Waititi Star Wars thingy that's happening. Um, we didn't yeah. mention that the lady who co-wrote 1917 is involved with it, and they've also confirmed the Russian doll lady is, I haven't got their name in front of me, is doing something as well. So yep. yes. yes, throw another Star Wars property on the on the Barbie. So that's Mandalorian, Cassian, Obi-Wan, and then this is the fourth streaming show. Mm-hmm. The new one with the, the Russian doll showrunner? Yeah. Which yep. I'm, I'm predicting is a spinoff of Mandalorian with Ahsoka. You reckon that's the Ahsoka spinoff? Could be, mm. possibly. Could I guess maybe much- if um, you know, they've just done the big Clone Wars thing. They kind of they've really, if that character, that character is as popular as she's ever going to be, and then they're going to have her in Mandalorian live action as well. Yeah, yeah. It could work. Yeah, why not? Yeah, <laughs> it, could, it, it could absolutely be that. Like, the, if they keep branching out and introducing new, new people, new people, new people, like we'll just end up with this spread that's going to be too much to to sort of keep track of for a lot of people plus you're Mm. adding like the high republic and that's its own thing with its own characters again and that's coming out soon like it it would just be overbearing so like this this period Mm. of was like i think i think sean's right like if they if ahsoka is as popular as she is right now like they'd be crazy to not just put some focus there and like well they don't i mean the, the, the part of the massive like crossover appeal of Mandalorian was Baby Yoda. Like, you can't really pull that rabbit out of the hat twice. Like, it's, no. that, you know, that got casual to non-casual fans into it. Like, I, are we ever going to see, you know, they're going to have to live and die a little bit more on their merits, aren't they? Like, you're not going to be able mm. to just pull out like a, a Baby Yoda again and, and um, no. <clears throat> hope people are going to jump on. So, yeah, I mean, you know, like nobody, like I, I could ask 20 people who say they like Star Wars and none of them want to know who Ahsoka Tano is. Yeah, yeah, but that's that'll change. That'll absolutely change. Like especially, like I think with uh, Disney Plus, like now getting kind of crazy COVID numbers and whatnot like that. Like people are bored, people will see more stuff. It's it's gonna it'll it'll get exposure. It'll absolutely yeah. get exposure. And there's a lot of articles um, coming out now. That, you know, the best Star Wars character is someone you've never heard of. You know, on like Buzzfeed mm. and stuff like that. So it is. She's kind of bleeding oh, into the light. Like, yeah. <laughs> Didn't uh, they that's just do like a, what's your favorite? What's the best Star Wars character? Didn't they just do something and I just put tolerant fan as the <laughs> yeah, sort of like accepting was... fan or something like that? Yeah, that's the best Star Wars character. Um, just so that we're like not saying, oh, that person, that person, why not? So showrunner of uh, Russian oh, dolls, Leslie Headland. Oh, thank cool. Well, I yeah. need to put. Um, the actress from Rush, she's awesome. Put her in Star Wars. Um, oh, oh, um, oh, I've forgotten her name. Uh, yes, really that, but, you know, she was an American Pie, she's in a bunch of stuff. But, um, oh, what's her name? Uh, I want to say it's she's Natalie, hilarious. but I don't think it is. She's hilarious, yeah, she's very funny. Um, and the co writer, um, so it's Christy, yeah, so Christy Wilson Cairns, uh, is the co writer, uh, and uh, will be. Yep. We're writing with uh, Taika Waititi. Do you have any? Did... Hmm? I was just going to say, do you guys have any inkling of what you reckon? Old new story, established character, established spin-off, established timeline, High Republic. The High Republic doesn't feel right. Um, if they were going to do a movie yeah. for High Republic, they would have said so. I think. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I think they're waiting to see how that one blows down, like blows out, see yeah. if people like it or not. But I mean, it feels yeah. like. I don't know. I, I, I'm not quite sure where they go with, with new new movie Taika Waititi. Yeah. Get, yeah. get a whack, get a bit wacky. He walk movie. Well, could be wacky. He's got the chance could. to do tons of different things. Like if you just look at I mean, like, you... there's, there's no kind of you know. It's not like you go, oh, if it was, I don't know, Michael Bay, you'd be like, yeah. oh, well, it's going to be some stupid action. It's going to be action like a you know war movie action stuff. But like Taika Waititi does, he's done like comedy, horror comedy. You know, historical stuff, indie, comic stuff book. With, stuff with kids. He's good He's good yeah. at making, like, you know, Boy and Will the People and Jojo Rabbit. Like, he can he can have a kid as a central character and make it work 
without mm. it seeming like it's a grown up pretending to be a kid, if you know what I mean, or a kid yeah. pretending to be a grown up. You can make it work. Yep. And I so that's nice thick New Zealand accents in there. The real oh, shit, yeah. like, annoying thing about like the the news gets announced. You know, most people are like, "Oh, this is going to be great," and like, you know, obviously you got those you got those people like, oh, "I don't want another. I don't want the MCU and Star Wars to be the same." It's like the dude's made tons of movies. Dude yeah. was nominated for an Academy Award for something that's not an MCU movie. Watch some other movies, dickheads. Like seriously, mm. there's other things that aren't that aren't these two properties. Like, get an opinion. <laughs> well, I, had, I sent you the screenshot I took of someone who was like, "Oh, this is good news as long as it's there's not too much comedy in it." You're like, oh. have you seen anything that he's done? All he does is he's he's got that. I mean, you might have talked about this before. He's got that perfect balance of like heart and comedy. You can just do yeah, them both yeah. at the same time, and it's, yeah. it's, it'll be great. I think he'll. When we had to... um, when we had Saf on, I think the time before she's been on quite recently. But when we had her on the last time, we, we, we you know, there was talking about that of him doing a movie even back then. It's just like you got to let the eagle soar, man. There's no point getting yeah. Taika Waititi and then being like, "What's all this freaking? Why is this so Taika Waititi all over it?" Like that's how you, Lucas. You know, Lucasfilm have been burnt because they've yeah. hired directors with particular tones and voices whether you're lords and your millers and your um yeah. uh gareth edwards and all those kind of guys and then they've you know sucked the life out of them a little bit um to create something which is more star wars um i think you've got to be careful but i think the the, the fact is that like he landed that mandalorian finale and there's a yeah, lot of Taika Waititi, so but there's a lot of Taika Waititi in that that is oh, different yeah. in those other episodes, and people loved it. So it, it's you could let the yeah. eagle soar, man. Which is I, well, I mean, that's yeah. the thing. The MCU Ragnarok was such a big shot in the arm to keep that keep that whole because that it was I think flagging. Ragnarok, yeah, and I flagging. think that completely changed. Like the Thor treat trilogy had gone down the toilet. Like that was shit. Like no one gave gave a shit about that character, and then he just kind of brought it all back, completely changed it. And you, when you watch like Endgame and Infinity War, there's a big trying like other directors and other writers trying to do that sort of Ragnarok thing of like trying to be reverence a little bit, yeah, yeah. and yeah. and failing and failing and succeeding in kind of differing measures and stuff like that. But he's yep. definitely sort of gone in and done completely his own thing. Like you watch that movie and you're like, oh yeah, this is Taika Waititi. Yeah. Mm. You watch some of the other movies, the MCU, you're like, mm, I could have done this. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what are you doing? Because I'm, 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 right? I'm just going to, you know, be told what to <laughs> do right. by, they all look <laughs> the <laughs> same. So I just point and do this, do this, do this. That's true. Just a white guy in a baseball hat and, you know, a, a beard. You could you pass for any, like, you know, you know I mean? Marvel director. <laughs> I mean, that's obviously, like, made him qualified for most jobs. Like, obviously. Yeah. Like, People that have been working hard, but no, here is a, here's a guy in a baseball cap and he's white. <laughs> give it, give him a job. I thought I was talking to Josh. I thought I was talking to Josh Trank. I didn't realize. That. Exactly. Still, although Sean's got his pants on still, so you know. True. Sure, I haven't wrecked any houses and smoked too much weed. <laughs> and made a shit film. <laughs> and the <a> shit. <laughs> oh god. Um, uh, I think Tyka, if you, if you're going to give him something. I think the smart choice would be give him something that we know about, but we don't know too much about. Like we know, mm -hmm. like it could be a period or a group or something, something that's been name dropped, something that's been like existing in kind of the outskirts of, mm -hmm. of the planet that, you know, like any nerd will sit there and, and go, yeah, yeah, I know. Oh, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. The thing they've speculated the, about. Was it the Yu Vong Zong or the Yu Zong Vong? Except for that. <laughs> The stupidest no, EU thing. But they're like, if Taika was, the thing is, like, they could literally say anything. If they're like, we're doing the Dengar movie and Taika would tease him, I'm like, great, because he'll yeah. find a way to make this interesting. Um, same, same with Boba Fett. Like, I've, you know, I, I had Halls on the other day and he's a Bob, big Boba Fett guy. And I'm just like, oh, well, you know, but he's excited. I'm like, I would be, you know, he's got a New Zealand accent. There's a start. Yeah. Like, well, that, that is, that is one. Oh, I hadn't even thought of that. Like, mm. Oh, that would be great, actually. Do a do a grown up. Sarah Morris would be probably age appropriate. Well, even um, what's his face, Daniel Logan, like yeah. you could do that. You could do that time period, like where he's becoming Boba Fett, and you could do it with Danny Logan. He's the right age. He's got the accent. 
Wants that would be a ragtag bunch of misfit so, other you know bounty hunters and people trying to like you know, f him over. Reese and... Darby, Jermaine Clement, <laughs> just get yeah, him, oh, get him in there. Yeah. If they're not in, if they're not in whatever he makes, that would be uh, just a travesty. Mm. <laughs> like, uh, well, there's a lady. There's a lady he has in all his movies who plays the. Yes. She's the police woman, I think, in Wilder People, and oh, she's in. My God, she's she's like, incredible. Goldman. She's hilarious. So I just want to see her in there in Star Wars as well. That'd yeah, be awesome. yeah. And I want some like really, really uh, niche Aussie New Zealandy kind of references, like they had in Ragnarok. Like you know, the the, the, the Grand Master's car was called a Commodore. You know, like, oh yeah, 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 like, yeah. You know, <laughs> like I want more of that sort of stuff in it as well. That would just, just feel, well, like, like film it in New Zealand. I think we touched on this. I touched on this a few weeks ago. Like Australia, New Zealand are looking like we're going to get out of this. COVID-19 thing a lot quicker than a lot of other places. There's a great big bloody bunch of movie studios here. Like, yep. you know, yeah. they own Fox Studios again now in Sydney, I assume. So, you know, yeah. dude, I think that's part. I'm sure, sure that's part of the deal. So, they're like, where they shot episode two and three, like, I kind mm. of thought maybe they'd shoot Obi-Wan there anyway because, you know, you and McGregor well, the, spend a lot of time in Sydney. But The Docklin Studios are apparently incredible. Like, my brother-in-law works as a location scout. And he's saying, like, yeah, they do. Ton they've done tons of stuff over there. Um, like, this final season of uh, Preacher was all filmed there. And ah. um, when you watch it, like, it, they do actually move the show to Australia for a bit, which is quite funny. But, like, all the stuff that's set in Texas, he's like, yeah, no, we built that on a set. That diner is something we built and so on. And it's it's incredible. Huh. It's time to start shooting Star Wars in Melbourne, people. Come on. Fuck you yes. know, let's, let's Give us a chance. We're all we're all cooped up inside. Like, let's, let's, let's have Taika come to Melbourne, shoot. The Boba Fett adventures, or whatever it's going to be, and um, yeah, and we can try and get on set because <laughs> if we didn't be able to get anywhere near it, but you know, well, I mean, someone needs to do Star Wars links. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. Yeah, so why not? Why not us, um, guys? Thanks for coming on, taking time out on your busy schedules to to, to jump on here and uh, have a little good chit chat about timelines and pregnancies and all that kind of stuff. And so what's, what's going down in uh blue Bantha milk co world at the moment? Uh, well, I can tell you what I'm edit yeah, editing quite slowly, very slowly. <laughs> we, so we've got this video about uh, circular referencing, which is basically when you have something that inspires another something that then comes all the way back and then, and re inspires the original thing. Uh, you know, like, the good example is Dune inspires parts of Star Wars, and now you can see visual elements of Star Wars influencing the new Dune, whether they know mm -hmm. it or not. Like, I don't yep. even you know talk about that specifically, but it's just that's a good example. Like, yep. So, so we're editing that at the moment slowly, um, and we've got a few other ideas in the pipeline. Um, what else we got going on, Sean? Got anything else going on that's worth mentioning? Put you on the um, I'm I'm trying to put together a, a script for we we keep going back and forth on this and kind of like how to do it uh, for when the quarantine's over doing a um, reaction video for the Phantom Menace trailer as though we watched it in 1998. And, See the um, 1998 haircuts going. And, so we could go, uh, you know, yeah, put on yeah, South Park yeah. t-shirts and and uh, be blissfully unaware about 9/11 and then just yeah, that'll be fine. <laughs> God, guys, can't wait to go for a holiday to the World Trade Center. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, just, you know, so we're kind of trying to put that together. Arc. But um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I probably will cut that stuff. Yeah. Um, so yeah, go and do some fun stuff and have a bit of an experiment. Like we got stuck on the road to nine for very, very long. So it's nice to sort of have a bit of time to not be as um, as hectic with our schedule and sort of let things let things grow, which is nice. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Trying new things too. Like, I mean, mm. God, one thing we haven't quite, we never settle down on and just say, this is the format. This is what we're going to do. <laughs> Which, ah, you, 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 this doesn't it? The algorithm loves it when you just keep changing things. You, uh, it's ah. a good time to, you know, when there's sort of like stuff's up in the air and we don't know what's going on, it's a good time to, you know, try a few yeah. things, get a bit funky. Yeah, yeah, I mean, exactly. the whole thing's fun anyway, right? So if we, if we want to try something, we'll try it. Yep. Yeah. No rules, man. No rules. Um, so where can they find your stuff? Facebook? Obviously, ah, well, YouTube, uh, Twitter. 
got YouTube. So you just go to YouTube and uh, search for Blue Bantha Milk Co. Or uh, yeah, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can see the uh, URL there. You can find us similarly on Facebook. So facebook.com forward slash Blue Bantha Milk Co. Um, or you can tweet us at Blue Bantha Milk. No co in that one because, you know, not enough space. But yeah, that's us. Very impressive. I'm still just impressed by these little like doodahs that you're putting up on the screen. But uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to try it now too. So uh, if you do are, uh, you know, if you want to get in touch with us, you can follow us on Twitter at uh, at Star Wars Spell. So there it is. Oh man, this is cool. And uh, if you want to buy some of our stupid t shirts, you can go to T Public. Um, we've just got a new one, a uh, new Mon Mothma one, uh, which people quite like. And if you, yep. I'm done, we've got the address, but if you're in Australia, go to Redbubble and, um, and get it there because it's way cheaper. So okay, that's the good. way to, to do that. And um, I think that's it. And then we also just at starwarsspelledout.com, which has got the podcast, which you are now listening to unless you're watching this on a video. So thanks, guys. Pleasure to have you as always. You. Looking forward Thank to having a beer in the real world soon. Uh, one day, mate, one day. Soon. Even if we have to be like metres apart, like I think they'll they'll lift that soon, won't they? Like once they get enough COVID tests, it'll be like, 10,000, yeah. isn't it? 10,000 tests or 100,000 tests. And then uh, left it. Well, so actually, anymore. Monday, apparently, we're going to find out some stuff. So, yeah. but um, the next time, I'll, but the next time you hear us, we could be just sitting at a pub. We'll be, you know, what the next time we have you guys on, we'll be at a pub and we'll be podcasting, whether that's next week or in a couple of weeks. Let's, let's book that in. Let's do it, definitely. The way that we'll have to have our own mics and our own headphones just to hear what everyone's <laughs> doing. Yeah, it'll be worth it. Uh, awesome. All right. Thanks, guys. No worries, mate. Thanks for having us. See you later. Bye-bye.